Hi, we are reviewing the Ashford E-Spinner Super Jumbo, made in New Zealand. This is a machine that is used for spinning fibers into yarn, and the primary breeds that I spin are Shetland, Old English Baby Doll Southdown, and Suffolk. Let's go over the parts of this thing, so go ahead and zoom in. First thing is the threading hook which sits already on the side. This is used to thread the yarn through the orifice. Next, we've got the orifice reducers. This is what it looks like with no reducers in it at all. And there's two spots down here to hold the reducers. So we've got a large one. I'm gonna shove in there. And this is the size that I use. You can also reduce it smaller with the second orifice reducer. And if you were to put, play, press that in there, that's gonna make the orifice pretty small. So you could spin really thin yarn on this or take it out as I normally do. And here you can spin super bulky yarn, art yarn, etc. Next we have the yarn guide which is this piece right here. You would simply squeeze this and you can move it around on the shaft, release it and it tightens. The yarn will be going through this black ring. Next you have the bobbin. I'm gonna lift this up and remove the bobbin. And this is what the bobbin looks like. This is the front of the bobbin and the rear of the bobbin. You can also buy additional bobbins that are unfinished. And you can simply finish them by sanding them and applying a wood finishing wax. And it is nice to have extra of these around. These are the Country Spinner 2 bobbins. And those are the ones that will fit with this Ashford E jumbo. Next we've got the leather bra brake band and that is the strip right here. This is the tension adjustment. So if I were to tighten this knob it's going to tighten this leather brake band and the tension will be tighter. If I turn it counterclockwise or to the left it's going to loosen this band and loosen the tension. This is going to affect how the yarn pulls up onto the bobbin. Lastly, we have the drive band. And this is basically a, a belt that's going to run the rear of the bobbin. Now your unit, when you buy it, does come with some oil. So Ashford provides some spinning wheel oil right here. And to maintain this unit, I'll show you where you want to place the oil. So you're going to have oil on this metal rod here. You're going to put a drop here on the rear where it would sit here. One on the middle. And then we also want one under this leather brake brand. Brake band. <laughs> leather brake band. Say that three times, right? <laughs> So we're going to oil under that, one in the middle, one on the rear. Now I'm going to show you how to install the bobbin. So this should be facing the front. So we're going to carefully slide this on. And now if we come to the rear, this should sit in this groove. Now it's time to adjust the drive band. You'll see that there's three different grooves on the bobbin. This lower one is if it's in a resting position and not in use. The middle one is where it needs to be when you're actually spinning and using the machine. There's really no need at all to have it on this upper one. So we're gonna set it up to use it. Now you'll see on the bottom here, that there's a groove here. 
So the belt needs to go in that groove and up and over into this middle, middle groove on the bobbin. So this is the operating one in the middle, the resting one's on the bottom. Now the belt is installed and ready for operation. Additional part for this is the foot pedal. You can tap this for on and tap it for off. Then we have the adjustments or the controls on the front of the machine. So for spinning, you need to have it in spin. And if you're going to ply, you would flip that up to the ply setting. We're going to go in opposite directions. I rarely do any plying, so I'm going to have it on spin. You have on and off and the speed. If I turn the machine upside down here so that we're looking underneath of it, this is where the foot pedal plugs in and this is where the power cord plugs in. The pros and cons of the Ashford e-spinner jumbo. The first con is the cost. It can be more expensive than a traditional spinning wheel. Secondly, it requires a large nitty knotty, and that's a tool that you put the yarn on when you're taking it off of the bobbin. And this bobbin holds a lot of yarn. Also, it does require electricity. The pros are that it can spin multiple sizes of yarn, from art yarn, chunky yarn, all the way down to thin yarn, whatever your preference is. Secondly, it's compact. It fits on the tabletop, it's portable, and it does not take up that much space in your house. And it comes with a really handy dandy canvas bag. Also, it has an adjustable speed knob right here. With a traditional spinning wheel, you have to pedal your feet to get the speed up. With this, you just adjust the knob. And my favorite is that this can abruptly start and stop. With a traditional wheel, you have to stop pedaling and then the wheel is going to continue to spin for a while and it takes a few seconds to stop. With this, I tap the foot pedal one time and it stops. I can go grab dinner out of the oven, answer a phone call, do my thing, come back, start right back up again. So that makes this thing wonderful. Five out of five stars. What can you produce on this machine? So I'm going to just simply go over yarn that I've spun on this thing to show you what it looks like. Um, the way I store my finished spun yarn is I just get some plastic totes like this. I just pick it up at Mills Fleet Farm or Menards. And uh, these have nice lids that lock down. Mainly you want to keep moths out of your wool products. So this is a nice way to store it. So that's what I do. When I label my yarn, I actually label it with the name of the sheep. Yes, all my sheep are named. <laughs> and um, this is the year that the fleece was shorn. So it's not the year that I spun it. Technically, I, I just spun this one this year in 2022, but the fleece was shorn off the animal in 2020. So this is an example of a Shetland here, a Shetland ewe named a maize. And this is something that I've done, um, like I said, this year. So I've gotten a little bit better at spinning since I've had it for a while now. So that's an example of hers. This is an example of some lamb's wool. Now this is a Shetland lamb. I actually don't love spinning the lamb's wool as much as the more mature animals. It just handles differently to me. Um, but this is an example of it. So it's a little bit less consistent when you're looking at it. It's a little bit more of the thick and thin. It's very soft though. The lamb's wool is very soft. So that's an example of a lamb's wool. And this, that's a Shetland. This is a Shetland ewe. It's a little bit chunkier spinning. And this is also a Shetland weather that was white. So those are some examples. Here's 
Here I have an example of a Suffolk fleece. So that's a different breed of sheep. And it's a little more coarse compared to Shetland. I was able to draft it and spin it pretty easily though. It drafted nice and thin and I was e easily able to spin it at a faster speed. So that's something I learned about the Suffolk fleece. Now for you beginners, don't feel discouraged. This is an example of some of my very first yarn that I spun. It was very thick, chunky, uneven. And, uh, and you know what? It still has a lot of character. It still is very fun. This is also old English baby doll South Down wool, which that breed has a very short staple length, like typically two inches or less, depending on the animal. So it's very difficult to draft it out thin without it breaking. So when I spin this, it's going to be at a much slower speed and um, a much chunkier, thicker wool, which does have its, its place, just a different, different look. So don't be discouraged if you're a beginner, you can um, improve your skills as time goes on. Let's just go over just a few more examples. This is a black Shetland and uh, this is a Shetland ewe, just a different textured fleece than some of the other gals. Another Shetland, this is spun a little bit thicker. Here's another Shetland, also this is spun thicker. And last but not least, I'll just show you, I don't normally ply, but I did try plying some Shetland wool in the past. And to be honest, I'm not a real big fan of it. I prefer the single spun chunkier yarn, but this is an option you can ply on this machine. So considering all the pros and cons for this machine, I would give this five out of five stars. Um, it's a great machine, great for beginners. I love it. So I hope I've encouraged you to try spinning yourself. Bye.